हेलो गाय हेलो मरा में सब्सक्राइबर हेलो गाय Hello, good afternoon po. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And uh, it's really been a blessing, amen? amen? That once again we can study uh, the Word of God. Uh, last night, uh, John and I were having a chatting. Then, uh, <laughs> but John told me, Kuya Rilson, pareho pala tayo ng, ano, ng, uh, ng topic. But, uh, uh, Focus ako sa kay Leia. Sabi ko, ah, okay lang. Medyo okay lang. Kasi ako, focus din ako kay ano. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a blessing. Kasi kahit anong uh, gawin natin, uh, marami talaga tayong makukuha sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Amen? And, uh, nagtaka kayo bakit na bumunta tayo sa Genesis. Kasi, dito sa drama tapos natin sa action so sa drama naman tayo so anyway so that's a great blessing uh, since morning uh, from Sunday school and then uh, in our worship service and I hope that uh, you will uh, keep on listening to the word of God and be attentive on it Amen uh, this afternoon uh, I'm not going to uh, preach much uh, more on teaching this afternoon uh, so please bear with me Amen uh, don't sleep <laughs> Amen Hello, guy. <laughs> okay, lang ba to? Okay. Sagit lang po. <coughs> Ula ba tayong juice or tinapay jan? Juice or tinapay? Ula ba? <laughs> okay, shall we all stand and let us um, read our text here in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 29. We're not going to uh, read the whole chapter, so we'll just read from uh, 1 to 15. Are you there, Po? Okay, let us read this uh, responsibly. I will read verse 1 and you will read verse 2. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And hither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said to them, My brethren, rest ye. And they said, Give a fire Verse 5, And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. <coughs> Verse 9, And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. Everybody, Verse 10, po. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of the Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Shall we pray? Our loving Lord, once again, we're so thankful, Father, for your faithfulness in our lives. As we continue, Lord, the... Uh, The study in uh, chapter 29 of uh, Genesis. Uh, please help us, Lord, that we can get those uh, principles from your word that will enable us, Father, to be uh, effective and useful, Lord, and uh, have this uh, spirit, uh, um, uh, spiritual uh, uh, wisdom, Lord, God, that uh, we need from your word. And I also pray, Lord, that you will uh, bless us and uh, please be the one to uh, give us, Lord, God, that attentive minds and hearts. This is all us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Po. Please be seated. So I'm not going to do the uh, previous uh, things that we uh, usually do. 
go into with the previous chapter, but uh, we'll just uh, focus right away on uh, chapter 29. So, here, life isn't easy, amen? Do you believe in that? We have to understand that what life does to us depends a great deal on what life finds in us. Now, we have to understand that Jacob could have easily left his family, family's problem behind, that we have to understand that he had to take along his biggest problem himself. Now, let us uh, go back to, uh, uh, proceed to uh, Genesis 31, verse 41. The Bible tells us here, during the next 20 years, in Genesis uh, 31, 41, Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wa wages 10 times. Uh, I'm so thankful that uh, Brother John were able to... Uh, uh, expound to you a while ago in uh, verses 30 to 35 because I'm not going to uh, move there. We'll be studying only until uh, verse 30. Now Jacob would have experienced what he called those painful trials in Laban's household. But we have to understand that in the end, he would become God's man to accomplish his will. Amen? Now, however sometimes, okay, we don't understand the plan of God in our lives. Okay? We don't understand. We have to understand that we are making important decisions in our life. We are making important decisions on the road of life and decisions that determine our character and destiny. Now, here in verse 1, it says here, then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. Now, because the Lord blessed his trip, Jacob now returns to the land where uh, the land that his mother, mother came, came from and being also the land of his grandfather who is Abraham. Now, last night, I, since last week, when I started this one, I, I don't have the title. But... One, uh, while I was uh, listening to the testimony, uh, I suddenly uh, had a title, Smooth and Not Smooth. <laughs> no, the uh, Birula. So, in this study, let us continue here. And he looked, verse 2, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it, for out of that well they watered the flocks. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth. Now, during this uh, journey, it really takes time and it's so long. Remember that uh, when uh, Jacob uh, had this journey, he was alone. He was not with a caravan or with a, with a group. Now, try to imagine uh, while traveling in the desert, it's so hot during the daytime. Okay? And then it's been cold during the nighttime. But again, the... Uh, Mercy and the presence of God was with him. Now, fortified by the gracious promises that God had given him at Bethel in verses 20, chapter 28, 10 to 22, but we're not going to read that verse as there. Jacob made a long journey now going to Padnadaram. Okay? So, this experience reminds us that uh, also the long journey of Abraham's servant. Okay? Remember when Abraham sent a, a, his servant going into Mesopotamia to find a uh, wife for his son Isaac? Amen? According to the word of God, he was the, uh, uh, the chief of, of his uh, servants at, at home. And uh, particularly, the, some scholars said that it was a lizard. Now, the same thing that happened. But there's no record here in the word of God or here in the word... Uh, Jacob prayed to God. There's no record. But whatever is it, I believe that when Jacob was on his journey, going into the land of his mother, I believe that he was praying. Amen? Remember in chapter 28, while he was sleeping, okay, he had a vision, he had a dream, where a ladder from, uh, there was a ladder go, going to heaven, wherein he saw angels ascending and descending on it. And he called that place what? They what? The house of God, Bethel. Amen? Now, I believe that uh, 
In every place where we worship God, that is the house of God. Man, where the presence of God is always there, where the presence of God is present, that is the house of God. Now, during his journey, we have to understand that God is always there. We have to understand as a believer, as a Christian, as, we, as a children of God, that we don't have to be afraid of our journeys of life because our guidance uh, as we travel along the way is none other than our God. Now, First, Jacob's love for Rachel. Okay. Now, while I was reading this, uh, I was really touched. Okay. Because talking about love, again, love is so powerful. Amen. It's really powerful. Now, here in verse 4, it says here, And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, because he was already uh, on his journey, and uh, suddenly, not noticing, he arrived in that area, in that place. And he said unto them, because he saw some people, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? Uh, verse 4, And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. Here, Jacob didn't know where he was until he as someone and that is natural and that is normal and that is common amen when we are new in that place we tend to ask somebody amen for us to ask directions and that is uh, really common and he discovered he was at his destination in verse 6 in verse 5 let's continue and he said unto them know you Laban the son of Nahor and they said we know him amen so after hearing that oh he has now that confidence in his heart. Oh, I am now in the right place. Because he was guided by God. Now in verse 6, he, And he said unto them, Is he well? And he, they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. Now, as we go, Dito na pumasok yung love at first sight. And that is really common. Uh. Okay? Love at first sight. Makita mo yung isang tao, abang tinamaan ka agad. And I believe the same thing is what happened to Jacob when he saw Rachel. Now, in verse... Let's continue. Verse 7. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Now, he was now uh, talking to those uh, men who were also uh, uh, drawing water for the sheep. And he said, Neither it is time that the cattle should be gathered together, water you the sheep, and go and feed them. No. We have here the impression that when Jacob saw Rachel, as what I've said to you a while ago, okay, it was love at first sight. Okay, love at first sight. And this is also explains why he tried to get rid of those what? Men. Okay? Who were also watering uh, for their flocks. Uh, he asked them to leave. He said, why not? Uh, it is already a high day. It's already about uh, time to go. Why not uh, giving water for all those sheep? Okay? The reason for that, because he wanted to be what? Alone with Rachel. Amen. <laughs> he wanted to be alone with Rachel. Now, the stone that covered the well was large and heavy. It was really heavy here in verse 2. But Jacob was able to what? Move it so he could water Rachel's flock. Now, para ba makita natin yung parang bang pakitang gilas yung pagkakita talaga niya? Minsan natural yun eh. Bakit ang gilas ka? Water the flock. But that's normal. But that's common. But again, here, later on we will uh, continue to study about that. When he introduced himself, he ran to tell Laban about the news. Now, let's continue as we read this one. Verse 9, And while he had spake with them, 
Rachel came with her fathership, for she kept them. Now notice, most of the women during those days, their work were what? What's their work? They were what? Drawing waters, and most of them were what? Shepherds during those days. That's why yung makikita natin yung uh, gatas na, anong gatas yun? Yung parang uh, milkmaid. Diba? Yung gatas na, yung may babae na makita kang nakapatong ng parang pat dito sa kanilang ulo. Okay? Kasi yun ang mga trabaho ng mga babae during those days. Now, as we continue here, in verse 10, And it came to pass when Jacob saw Ra Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled a stone for the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And in verse 11, it's very surprising. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Try to imagine, it's their first time. First meeting. And then suddenly, Jacob will uh, run and then suddenly kiss. Crying. It's very strange, amen? It's really strange. But again, in the ancient East, family ties were very strong and visiting relatives, including those you've never met before, would be entertained. Would be entertained in the home and of their own flesh and blood. Now we can see here the providence of God in this meeting. Jacob could have borrowed those words from Isaac's servants in Genesis 24, 27, please. In Genesis 24, 27, it says here, And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's <coughs> brethren. Now they said, unbelievers can call this what called a fortunate, what they call, coincidence. But, as a believers, we would see it in a gracious leading of the hand of God, because in the life of the trusting Christian, there are no what accidents, but only appointments. Amen? In the lives of those Christians. Kaya nga, hindi tayo niniwala ng mga malas. Because we believe that if we are following the will of God, everything will be alright. Now, let's see here. But we also see in this event the beginning of some positive changes in the character of Jacob. You know, God is always teaching us. Wherever we go, whatever situa situations we are facing in life, God will always give us what we call particular, what we call lessons in life. That we have to learn. Now, for one thing, look at this boldness as he confronted the shepherds. He moved the stone and he what introduced himself to Rachel. And he also what? His honesty as he told his story to Laban. In verse 18 later on, as we can see that. Now, as we continue, we are here in verse 14. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. It was very exciting at first. But Laban may hope that Jacob would be a what? As a generous servant. Now, his meeting with Laban. Now let's go back to verse 11. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass, verse 13, when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him. 
and brought him to his house and he told Laban all of these things. Now we can see here the hospitality that Laban showed to uh, Jacob. Okay, we uh, Asians are very, uh, I mean, when it comes to hospitality, I believe we're number one with regards to that. And verse 14, and Laban said to him, surely thou art my bone and my flesh, and he abode with him the space of a month. But take note, in verse 15, and Laban said unto Jacob, because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for not? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? It really sounds nice, amen? It is, was really a nice offer, but Laban let Jacob know that if he wants to stay around, he must stay as what? As a hired servant. Amen. Now, Jacob was the son of a wealthy man, Isaac. I believe certainly he wasn't lazy. Amen. But he wasn't used to what they call hard work. He wasn't used with that. Because at home, the servants were the ones who do the what? Hard work. But now, Jacob is a servant. I try to analyze. It's so hard, right? Now remember, when he left home, he was penniless. So I've the pastor from nothing to there is. Now, Jacob's reaction in this situation will reveal much of his character. I posted it last night. And this demonstrates of that principle that you never know what kind of servant you are until others treat you like servant. Totoo yan. I'll repeat. You never know what kind of servant you are until others treat you like servant. Now, during his first month in Laban's house, Jacob did his share of the work and was happy for every opportunity to be with Rachel. He was so happy. What Jacob didn't realize was that Laban was a master schemer, deceiver, who would control his life for the next 20 years. Of course, in the excitement of that moment of decision, which involved accepting, uh, which involved accepting a job and being engaged to a beautiful woman, Jacob failed to notice that Laban made no promise to give Rachel after seven years. That's why you have to be careful sometimes in our excitements without really thinking if it is really the will of God or if it is really in accordance to God's wisdom. We're so excited. Yeah, yes, we have to do this without really thinking about it. Now, he only agreed to give him Rachel for his wife. That was his, their agreement. But again, as we continue here in verse 16, and Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was what? Rachel. In verse 17, Leah was tender eyed. Now, tender eyed means uh, weak eyed. Okay? Weak eyed. Something it means that uh, her eyes were really bad and uh, she couldn't see well. Or the other said, her eyes were dull and not beautiful. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Okay? Not only Rachel was beautiful in form and also in appearance, but she was also the first okay, friendly face that Jacob met when they were on the well. She was the first woman that she met in that area. And it is understandable why he had love at first sight and attachment to Rachel. Now, as we continue, verse 18, And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy 
younger daughter. Now, Brother Joe explained to us this morning that the uh, work for seven years was essentially a dory, okay? Before Jacob came from a family, but again, though Jacob came from a uh, family of a uh, great wealth, as what I've said, he left home without anything. He left home without anything. So before he could take a woman in marriage, he had to what? Provide a dory to demonstrate he was fit to support his family and compensate for the taking of the daughter. That is very important during those days. That's why in the present right now, it is very important that a per once a person tried to commit a, this so-called relationship, he, he must be sure that he can provide the needs of his family later. Amen? Hindi tayo niniwala na okay lang saging ang pagkain, basta loving. Hindi totoo yun. Ano pa pagkain mo sa anak mo, puro saging? Ano pa pa-enroll mo sa anak mo, puro saging? No. That's not... Uh, it's, it's not true. So, in verse 19, And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. So the, those are, were very comforting words from Laban. But again, as what I have said, Laban was a what? Master schemer. Right? He has a plan deep within his heart and trying to what? Persuade Jacob to stay with him so that he what? Can get something from Jacob knowing that Jacob came from a wealthy family. Now, The Bible is always telling us that it is really important to see the heart of a person than looking at the physical appearance of an individual. But this is always our mistake. We always tend to what? Observe the outside appearance of a person rather than looking at the what? Organs. The inside. In verse 20, and Jacob served seven years for Rachel. Hey, take note. And they seemed unto him but a few what? Days. Last day, a few days. Again, his first his agreement with Laban. He comes now. Jacob's labor for Rachel. Now, we can notice here the great love he had for Rachel. For seven years working without pay except a room, okay, and a board seemed to pass, what, quickly, as few days. Now, in the ancient time, Jacob wasn't allowed to spend as much time as he wanted Rachel because there were strict social guidelines keeping unmarried men and women apart from each other. It's very strict. Unlike right now, Pastor, pwede ba kaming lalabas ni ano? Kakain na kami ng mitya? Ayun, unang panahon, hindi pwede yan. There were strict uh, guidelines that they, they must follow. Or else, if they will do something uh, which is against on the, those guidelines, they might be stoned to death. And I believe even in the uh, Middle East right now, they're still practicing it. Okay? Eh nga, yung paghahawak ng kamay, hindi naranasan ni, uh, ano yan, ni uh, Jacob for seven years. Take note. For seven years. But again, this clearly demonstrates an important principle. Please listen very carefully. True love waits. Amen. Nakapaghihintay talaga ang tunay na pag-ibig. Hindi ka nagmamadali. Jacob was willing to wait seven years for Rachel. Once again, we see the growth of Jacob's character here. 
As he what? Patiently served Laban for what? Seven difficult years. It wasn't easy tending those sheep, tending those uh, uh, possessions that uh, Laban had. It wasn't easy feeding those animals, taking care of them. It wasn't easy. But again, because of love. Parang tayo mga tao, minahal tayo ng Diyos na hindi naman tayo kaibig-ibig. Pero binigyan na tayo ng pansin at pagkakataon upang ayusin na ating buhay. Upang bigyan tayo ng magandang kinabukasan. Binigyan tayo ng Diyos na buhay na walang hanggan. Nung tinagap natin siya na tunay bilang ating sariling tigapagligtas. Minahal tayo ng Diyos na walang pag-aalinlangan. True love waits. Shepherding isn't an easy vocation. And seven years is a long time. But because Jacob's love for Rachel took the burden out of the work and caused the time to pass quickly. Again, I believe when Jacob was working in the house of Laban, during those difficulties, difficult situation, I believe he was enjoying what he is doing. Amen? Enjoying what you are doing. That is why it is not a reason for us to say, I don't believe, okay? I, I, I'm really bored of what I'm doing right now. Keep on going to the audiences, teaching those people there. Hey, we have to think properly. We have to enjoy what we're doing because what we're doing is for the Lord and not for other people. Yes. Going to those villages isn't easy. We don't know if they're really listening to us or they're just going there to get something after we're teaching them so that they can eat. We really don't know. But hey, we have to enjoy and love what we're doing. We have to be committed of what we're doing for the Lord. The same thing as what Jacob did here. He was really committed. Remember, it is only for a woman. For a person. How about us? What we're doing for God? It must be for the best. Now, it's been well said that happiness consists of having someone to love. That's what they said. Again, sa atin iba. Masaya tayo kasi alam natin meron tayong Kristo sa ating buhay. Doon tayo masaya. Kaya nga, Pansin niyo yung mga Kristiyano na matindi ang problema sa buhay, nakakangiti pa rin. Masaya pa rin. Kasi alam natin na meron tayong hope. Meron tayong pag-asa. Meron tayong pagkakataon. Kasi ang ating pinaglilingkuran ay buhay na Diyos. At totoo. Tao lang to. Pero grabe ang kanyang pinakita. Something to do. And something to look forward to. And Jacob had all these three. Let's proceed in verse 21. The deception of Laban. Verse 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. These words were clear enough. It's very clear. So even though Jacob waited and time went quickly because of love, when the time was done, he comes now. He was done waiting. In verse 23, 22, And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a, a feast. It is easy for him to uh, make a feast, knowing that Laban is also a wealthy man, a wealthy person. He can easily uh, make these uh, uh, gatherings any time he wanted. They were rich. Verse 23, the arrangement. And it came to pass in the evening that he looked, he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. Now at first, 
it was possible for Jacob to be fooled because of the wedding customs in those days. Now, according to those customs, the wife was veiled until she was finally alone with her, uh, with her husband in the honeymoon chamber. Matilim lahat niyan. Ang hirap na first time, kakapaan ka sa kasang ka. Diba? Wala naman. May flashlight ka dyan? Wala naman. Diba? So, ganun ang nangyayari. Okay? Siguro may code lang sila. Magpusa-pusa ka. Ako naman aso. Aw, 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 aw. Dito ako. Diba? We don't know. But again, something Laban wouldn't have difficulty arranging. <laughs> so, it wasn't hard for, for him to uh, make this scheme. Now, it helps explain how Jacob was fo uh, fooled here. Okay? Imagine, you, he's very excited on his wedding day, on their honeymoon. But again, we can also assume here that Leah was also in agreement with this. We can also assume. This is only uh, assume, okay? We only assume. It was not written here in the Word of God. Amen? But, of course, she may have what? Love Jacob secretly. Para bang secret lover. Diba? Para bang ganito. Hindi alam ng babae na girlfriend mo pala siya. Pero ikaw alam mo na girlfriend mo. Parang, parang ganun. Okay? Ayaw ko pa, paano na, na, nakuha ito? She, she may have loved Jacob secretly. Yet, even if she wasn't in agreement, we have to take note that she was, what? In the under, what you call, absolute authority of his father. Remember, the authority of the father at home during those days were really strong. Hindi basta-basta nababali yan. Ang authority ng father sa tahanan noong unang panahon. So the absolute authority of the father in the home during those days also explains why Rachel agreed to this. In verse 24, And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpah, his maid for an handmaid. And here in verse 25, And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. Oh, oh we can imagine how Jacob felt. And also how Leah felt. And also, of course, the poor Rachel felt. Pagising na umaga. Oh! Leah, ikaw, ikaw pala! Anong ginagawa mo dito? Niloko mo ako! Parang ganun. <laughs> diba? <laughs> Di, uh, we, we don't know the scenario. But again, it's really absurd, eh? amen? Now, what happened here? And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then thou hast beguiled me? Oh, what happened now? All of this is because of the sin of Laban. But of course, we can also say that it was because of Jacob's sin. Now, the deceiver is what? Deceived as well. He was also deceived. Wherefore then thou hast beguiled me? Or let us uh, make another translation on this. Why then have you deceived me? Because Laban's deception here was also similar to the deception of Jacob he made to his father, amen? And even to his brother. Remember the story? When Isaac was about to give the blessing, and then Rebekah 
told the Jacob on what to do. Of course, Esau was a hairy man and he was a cunning hunter. But Jacob was a what? Plain man who usually just stay at home. So what he did, he uh, plays a... Uh, yung uh, hairs of the uh, ship. of the ship. Pretending that he was uh, Ezo, because Ezo was a hairy man, and even we wearing the uh, clothes of uh, Ezo, he deceived his father. And the same thing as what he did to his brother Ezo. Amen. By getting the what we call birth, he was deceived. This is an example of Jacob reaping what he had sown. Jacob exchanged the younger for the older, but Laban exchanged the older for the younger. So the man who deceived his father here, the man who deceived his father was deceived by his what? Father-in-law. And the man who passed himself off the firstborn now receives Laban's first daughter to be his wife. That is why it is inescapable law of life that we eventually reap what we saw. Uh, Galatians 6, 7 to 8. I think Brother John have read this uh, text this morning. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Now, we have to understand that God in His grace forgives our sins when we confess Him in 1 John 1, 9. Amen? But God in His government allows us to suffer what? The painful consequences of those sins. The disappointment was just the beginning of the harvest for Jacob. I made a lot of the mistakes in the past. And I'm still, uh, some of those, I'm still uh, reaping it now. But again, there's always what you call chances. Because we've heard many, many times that God is a God of many chances. Amen? We can correct everything. Right now. Hello. Now, so when Jacob deceived his father and cheated his brother, take note here that God didn't change his plan to choose Jacob to receive the birthright. God didn't change the plan. Amen? Instead, God took Jacob now to the school of what? Hard knocks. To what? Discipline him. Discipline him. This shows that our disobedience may derail God's plan for our life, but it will greatly affect how we end up exercising it. You may spend out 20 years working for someone like Laban while God teaches you few things as well. There's always a lesson. But I'm so thankful for God. Kasi yung mga nangyari sa aking buhay, naging lesson sa akin. Lalo na ang decision making. Mahina talaga ako dyan. Mahina ako dyan. But I kept on praying to God, Lord, please help me. Sa aking mga pagkakamali. At Lord, ayusin niyo po ako yung buhay. What God wants us is that our willingness and our obedience to allow Him to work in us. Kasi if you will not allow God to work in you, nothing will happen. Hagang salita ka lang. But again, the good thing is this. Sa atin na mga nakaranas ng mga ganito problema sa atin pang buhay. Okay. Praise the Lord. The message this morning said, Praise the Lord. Pasalamatan mo pa rin yun. Kasi sa bagay na yan, itinuro ng Diyos kung anong dapat mong gawin sa iyong buhay. Na ibig sabihin, huwag mo nang gawin pa. Amen? Verse 26. 
And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. So this excuse by Laban basically says, well, di mo ba alam, uh, Jacob, ang uh, customs namin dito sa lugar na ito? Patakaran namin sa lugar na ito na dapat mauna ang panganay kaysa bunso. That's a good excuse. Amen? That's a good excuse. But again, sabi ni Laban, akala ko alam mo. But of course, we can see here the character of Jacob. But again, take note. Jacob doesn't have any choice. He needs to work, work for another seven years just to get the womb that he liked most. Reason. Verse 27. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me. Yet seven other years. Now, the second seven years made of Jacob's post-graduate work in the school of hard knocks. Now, Jacob's major in the school of hard knocks was what? You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. So Jacob protested to Laban. But again, he meekly accepted the consequence and went back for another seven years to work for Laban. I believe during the time he was really disappointed. But he cannot show it to Laban. Amen? That's a character. A quality of, quality of character that a person must have. Especially if you're a child, if you're a child of God. Yun bang disappointed ka na? Hindi pa rin halata sa iyong mukha. At hindi halata na parang masama ang nangyari sa buhay mo. Why? Because it's looking forward positively. Positive. Positively. Now, little by little, Jacob was learning to submit to God's loving hand of discipline and was growing in faith and character. Yan lang naman gusto ng Diyos sa ating buhay. God wants us to what? To submit to Him. Kung bumagsak ka, tanggapin mo, ayusin mo yung buhay, move forward for the Lord. Submit to Him. Kung susundin mo yan, maging maayos ang lahat. Now, at the end of Leia's uh, marriage week, Jacob married Rachel, the woman that he loved, and had another week to live like a king. See, ganun naman, seven days. Okay? But on, from then on, he would endure what he called thir- uh, 13 years of hardship and conflict. Not only because of his sons, of his in-laws, but also because of his what? Own wives and maids. That's why here in verse 29, And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her what? Maid. Okay? And and he loved also Rachel more than Leah and served with him yet seven other years. Now this morning, we've heard the point that Laban is a manipulator. Amen? He ends up getting exactly what he wanted. So both of his daughters were married into a man of wealth. 
Yet this will turn out badly for both himself and his daughters. Now take note. Oftentimes, God judges manipulators by giving them what in their sinful desires and methods want and allowing it to be a loss for them. Ganon ang ginagawa ng Diyos. Hinahayaan ka lang. Hinahayaan lang yung mga taong ganito. But later on, it will be a loss for them. Take note, pag ang Diyos ang gumawa sa ating buhay, walang mawawala sa atin. Kaya hayaan natin ang Diyos na mag-maniobra sa ating buhay. Hayaan natin siyang gumawa sa ating buhay at mag-appreciate mo later on, ma-recognize mo later on na napakabuti niya sa ating buhay. Now, the problems in this family can be seen immediately. Take note, not only Jacob married two uh, sisters, but he also lets everyone know that he loved what? The one. He uh, favored the one than the other. Pinakita niya. Mas mahal ko talaga ito. But again here, verse 30. And at last, Jacob married the woman that he loved. Again, Laban must have congratulated himself for the scheme that he did. It was very successful. Not realizing that the God was the one ruling in the entire event. Two more verses and we will end up here. Proverbs 21.30. It says here. Proverbs 21.30. In Proverbs 21.30, there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. Amen. So as Jacob son uh, Jacob's son Joseph would say many years later but as for you here in Genesis 50:20 Genesis 50:20 I'm sorry three two more verses left verses left Genesis 50:20 But as for you you thought evil against me but what God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. That's why we will jump right away to Romans 8 28. Christians today would quote this in Romans 8 28. We will end up here. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Again, there are no accidents journeys of life. It's all God's appointments. Now as we continue to study here, God saw that Leah was hated or it wasn't mean that uh, Jacob was uh, making a uh, violent, uh, I mean, uh, action towards her. But when you say he, she was hated, she was what unloved. So when God saw it, He opened the womb of Leah and Rachel, who is the favorite of, who was the favorite of Jacob was barren. Now we can see the plan of God here. It's all about character. The character of Jacob when he entered into what? The school of hard knocks. He became patient and he became submissive unto the will of God. Now, As we end, we're, we've heard many challenges from the Word of God. And I believe that this chapter reminds us that God is in control of everything. All we have to do is to trust Him and believe Him. And He will do the rest for us.
Shall we all stand? Our Father in heaven, thank you once again, Lord, for challenging us.